want to know what the movers and shakers of New Hampshire's performing arts are thinking? Welcome to New Hampshire Unscripted with your host, Ray Dudley. Welcome to our first video of NH Unscripted. I'm your host, Ray Dudley. Usually do the podcast in the other room, but tonight we wanted to try something a little bit different. I'm here with QCI, which stands for Queen, Queen City, City Improv. Improv. Excellent. And go ahead and introduce yourselves. Let's chat about right. improv. I, my name is Aaron Campagna. I am one of the members of uh, one of the members of Queen City Improv. One of the founding members. Um, been going on for like two years now. Yeah, we're right. just about to hit two years in July, right? Yep, something yep. like that. Yeah, uh, I'm Toby Paul. Uh, I'm the artistic director and also one of the performing troupe members and a founding member. Okay. Yeah. Brought this guy in. Yep. He yep. did. Found him wandering down the tracks. And stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's wandering he's everywhere. Home. Yeah. I'm always. Yeah. Wandering. I'm still wandering everywhere. <laughs> but. So let's go back to the original question, which was, how does this? How, how, how do you even think? I get stunned at theater group. I get maybe doing stand up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Improv to me is just frightening. So I don't get because there's no script. I mean, there's no right. right. So how does it start? How do you wake up and decide to do improv? So personally, for me, uh, improvisational theater is my favorite type of performing mm-hmm. in all the theater I've ever done: musicals, dramas, comedies. Uh, improv has always been my favorite. Is it an adrenaline thing? I it's. Mean, it what is. What makes it your favorite? I, so, uh, you know, theater, you have a script that you have to work off of, and if something goes wrong, something goes wrong, but you have a framework with which to kind of correct the course. Improv, it's all kind of willy-nilly, so there's that, there is that bit of adrenaline rush. Um, I think there's also a, a creative um, need that's being fulfilled because can I do this well and can I do it creatively mm-hmm. in front of a live audience on the spot? Um, it's just, I don't know, I've really enjoyed it. Um, growing up uh, with my parents and my brothers, you know, we would just have these big circle conversations um, outside or in the middle of the living room where everybody's just riffing off of each other, having a really good time. So it's been a very natural part of my upbringing. So when I finally started getting into theater and performing, it was just a very natural outlet. So mm-hmm. being able to do improv in junior high and high school and now into my adulthood has been very, very fulfilling. Um, Specifically, when it comes to Queen City Improv, one of my friends that I, uh, who's in our troupe, Phil, um, I, w- I went to high school with him, and we were in drama club together, and we had done, um, we had both talked about enjoying improv. We had done some improv-based stuff during drama club exercises and rehearsals and stuff like that. Um, because I went to college for theater, I always got to experience some level uh, of practice and rehearsing with improv. He didn't really get that because he went to school for, I think, communications or something. Um, So he's always had that desire, though. And as an adult, he's been able to take classes and workshops and improv, and it's been very fulfilling for him. But he came across the problem of in central New Hampshire, you know, Manchester region, you know, central and southern New Hampshire, there's not really any improv going on. So... As a means to not only help because them. Because it's frightening. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no. it's, it's, it's frightening because there's nothing really established in the area. On the seacoast, you have Stranger Than Fiction. Um, they're doing their stuff. In Boston, you have Improv Asylum and Improv Boston. There's a bunch of stuff in central Maine now. But there's kind of a dearth in our area. So not only for taking classes because driving an hour out to the seacoast there and an hour back after the class is kind of a pain in the butt. Mm. So uh, he was at a workshop and he ran into a couple other people, uh, Katie and um, Justin. Uh, Justin's no longer with the troupe. Um, but they were like, they just had a conversation. Wouldn't it be great if this was closer to us in Manchester? And so Phil, knowing that I knew people because I'm active in the New Hampshire theater community, said, hey, do you think there's anybody that would be interested in starting an improv troupe? And I was like, yes, absolutely. So I was directing a show in which Aaron and one of our other founding members, Jackie, um, were in. And I was I just tossed the question out, right? Yeah, I immediately grabbed it because here's the thing. When I was in theater school, I took some classes in uh, college for theater. 
and there was like script analysis and there was, uh, you know, acting classes and uh, all these things that you had to prepare yeah. and you had to spend like your nights, you know, working on and analyzing the story and all that stuff. And then there was this improv, which was for me, it was like recess. It was like, you know, recess in, in high school, in, in grammar school, or whatever. You, know, you just get to play games for however long it was, you know, an hour, 45 minutes or whatever. And it was so freeing to me. It's almost the, it's freeing the way you don't have to prepare too much beforehand. In fact, the, the, in fact, the more you prepare, the, the harder it's going to be because you, know, you have everything in your head that you want to do. And then it goes left and you have to go left too. So the less you have prepared in your head, actually, the, the funner it is and the freer it so is. So I, I get that you can do improv in a, in a work group, right, as, as you're trying to do with theater people and, <clears throat> and you're trying to get them to loosen up. There's a big jump between doing that just as a workshop thing and taking it out to an audience and saying, well, we could make a show out of this. Right. I mean, that's Mickey Rooney, Judy Garland. Like, <laughs> well, and, and that's one of the, the conversations we had to have. Um, what was it, like six months we were practicing and rehearsing yep. together before we were like... Before we were in front of anybody. We were ready to kind of put this in front of an audience and see right. what happens. Right. Um, so my head can't even get around those two. Improv, we're rehearsing. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, we will. Yeah, yeah. But here's yeah. the thing is like, okay, so I had this sort of like love of like the gamey part of it, like the fun part of it, you yes. know, like, you, you know, just doing it privately. But I also do a lot of theater in front of an audience. So it's like doing an improv show kind of combines the two. Okay. So, yeah, I think there's a lot of good aspects um, that kind of commingle between traditional scripted theater and live improvisational theater. Um, there are skills that utilize in one that it can be really helpful in the other um you know specifically when something goes wrong on stage what do you do um and there's a, a lot of different thoughts of process you know people have different <laughs> methods of dealing with that Either yeah. you just some just break out line, in a sweat you know, <laughs> break out in a cold sweat <laughs> run off stage you know there's a lot of different ways now when things go untoward on stage yeah. you and i've seen you improvise and you're brilliant at it um uh, when you're on stage, so but it's not. It's not as uh, It may not be as much of a mystery to you as you might think. That. All right, I'll go with that. I'll go with that. <laughs> so let's go back to the genesis. So, so it's two years old, mm -hmm. and you decided, or you and so there were six of us that kind of okay. performed it originally. Okay, uh, we had. I mean, we had a couple meetings at the cafe at the Barnes and Noble in Manchester. Like, mm -hmm. what is this whole thing going to look like? Um, I, it, getting a theater company started yeah. from scratch is a really bizarre process, and especially one where it's not a traditional company where you're looking to get royalties. You know, you need a set. Like, you have these very specific roles of, you know, tech designer. You have your director and producers and cast members and stuff like that. This is everybody's a cast member, and everybody's kind of putting the show together. Uh, I think it's one of the things that's really worked for our troupe, though, because uh, it really helped bond us through problem solving. Mm -hmm. What is the show going to look like? And I think it's really worked well for our chemistry on stage when we are performing. Um, but yeah, we sat down and just looked at those hard questions. If we're going to perform, how long do we perform for? Uh, when we perform, you know, because there's two types of improv. There's short form and there's long form. Okay. Do we include, do we just do one? Do we include elements of the other? So we kind of have a hybrid show right now. Um, we're looking at changing it still further down the road. Um, and you, how do you keep it fresh? What's the, are you just different topics or the audience keeps that fresh? There are fresh several different things that we've been doing. Um, one is we're always changing up the games. We're never playing the same order of games the same way. In yeah, every we show. haven't had the same set list okay. ever, right. for any time we performed. It's always okay. been vastly different. Right. Before we get into that, the mm -hmm. mechanics, I, I want to go back. I want to, I really am intrigued about the Genesis. So how many original members were there? And six. 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 And now there are still six? Well, now the, two of the original members left the troop, okay. but we added on. So now there are eight? No, we no, have ten, ten, ten we people have ten. involved in the troop. We have what we call the council. Uh, we have four people who are kind of in charge of um, setting any policies because, you know, we're trying to be legitimate. So like attendance policies, dress policies, content policies. Um, so there's four of us. We had very loose elections for it um it was just kind of looking at it's done at a bar it, close enough <laughs> <laughs> uh 
Uh, it was a uh, s- small childcare room at the YMCA in I Merrimack. Um, just to be able to have some guiding hand, because uh, there's such a, a vastly different amount of experience amongst individual troop members, um, not only in improv, but performing in general. Um, some people, uh, we have a couple who don't do any performing other than the improv. Um, you mean no other theater stuff? No other theater stuff. No other theater. theater. Uh, we have some who have had experience with improv and or theater, but it's not equal or hasn't been ongoing for most of their lives. Right. Um, Aaron has been performing for a very long time, I know. Right. Uh, but improv as a performance thing has been fairly new. Yeah, since, that, since those classes, which was like 20 years ago, I never really did it. I wanted to. But every time I really, I, I, I wanted to, but it was one of those thoughts. Like, oh, it'd be it'd be fun to join an improv troupe. But then that thought would just die I've out. Never had that thought. <laughs> I've never thought. Of it. Yeah, I just, can't wait. I, and it was because of when I took it in college. When I took it in college, it was just so fun that maybe I because I always thought. just thought it was an add-on to help the, the my theater stuff. It was a game, you know. Yeah. We played improv and yeah. did. maybe it's because I thought of that. I never thought of it as a as a thing. Yeah, itself. yeah, <laughs> as a thing, right? You're right. Yeah, that's. Uh, that's something I think it, it's a bit of a stigma with improv theater. Um, it's either looked at as kind of hokey or low key, or it's a tool that's used to help strengthen other skills in yeah, traditional yeah. theater. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, look at the success of whose line is it anyway? It's, it, it, it's entertaining and it's fun and it can be funny. Um, but you look at the people that have come out of, the professional organizations like Second City and Upright Citizens Brigade and Improv Olympics, you know, throughout the years, like mm-hmm. starting in the fifties, yep. you got such major talent out there. Half, if not more of the comedians and comic performers you see in TV and movies these days have come from an improvisational background. It's a great training ground. If you're in no matter who you are, or what age you are, if you're, if you're interested in doing theater and you want to train, um, uh, doing just improv, just going to like an improv open session or class or something like that. Um, it's just, and playing improv games is a great way. I've been, I didn't, I've been using a lot of those principles like in theater while I was, you know, since I've been sort of doing this. Um, and it's just, it's like, I'm not as, I'm not as, uh, scared anymore of things going hmm. south yeah. as much because I like, I have the tools, I think. I have a basic, understanding of the tools to use, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, where was the first place you did it? Uh, actually at the YMCA of, um, I was going to say the one I used to work at, <laughs> uh, the uh, National Mayor. YMCA, but they're Merrimack branch. Yep. So uh, that's where we had been rehearsing and we do a monthly open session. So um, every month for two hours, we open it up to whoever wants to come. It's free and you learn some improv skills. So that was kind of our... Our home base. So that wasn't a show necessarily, it w- or it was? So know? when we finally decided, hey, we're ready to put this up on its feet and kind of see what happens, we had an opportunity to um, let, have it coincide with uh, raising some money for the YMCA. Yep. So it was a charity show, oh. um, donations, and we got a decent-sized crowd, mostly friends and family, mm-hmm. um, people who were familiar with um, uh, our troop member, Katie, works for that YMCA. So she knew people who came in, and it was a small fundraiser. There was, what, six of us Yep, that ended up performing? Uh, I think Adam uh, had also joined the troop. Adam and Melanie had also joined the troop by then um, for that fundraiser. Yes. Because Adam was definitely there. Yeah, Adam was there. So, um, so there was they a- have a very small stage. Yep. We just put up some regular you know, yep. desk seating and kind of threw it out there. And I think one of the funniest moments that I've enjoyed as QCI happened that night or um, – where one of the first games we played is something called director's cut uh, where you do different jo- you do a scene and then you repeat it via different genres. And uh, the suggestion we asked from the audience was um, what is something you want to learn more about? And you just hear very loud and clear sex. <laughs> of course. At the YMCA. At the YMCA. This is a family show. And of course somebody shots that. My oh. mother did. <laughs> Are you kidding? It was my mom. <laughs> it was yeah, so been banned. <laughs> well, she hasn't come to one since, but that's for other reasons. Um, yeah, it was just... I don't even remember how we dealt with that. How did we deal with that? I think we laughed. And like, uh, uh, any you know, other suggestions? Any other suggestions, and we went from there. But just our, the first moment that we're actually performing in front of an audience, 
asking for our first suggestion, <laughs> and that's what we get. So, do you like working out of Manchester? Yes, you do. Yeah, yeah. Well, I live there, so yeah. I love it. Well, I know you do a lot of stuff now at the Handbox once a month. Or yep, yeah, yeah. So, do you have another other regular venues that you? Go to? Yep. Uh, well, no. So far, it's it's Millie's Tavern in Manchester. Sorry, uh, Stark Brewery. Stark Brewing. Yep. Formerly Millie's Tavern. Yeah. Um, and now uh, monthly show at Hatbox. Um, we do occasionally. Uh, we've done a couple other charity fundraising shows for the YMCA. Um, we don't have any other regularly scheduled venues because we find even doing the two. Um, with people actively performing in New Hampshire theater, other shows, musicals, and stuff like that, um, being able to get a consistently good sized group to go to a show can be difficult. So having the two monthly shows kind of one at the beginning and one towards the end of the month works really well for getting the maximum amount of people. We usually have perform. rehearsals like the week before. So it, it, it spreads out pretty evenly through the month, like show, rehearsal, show, rehearsal for the most part. Yeah, it's a, it's a continually ongoing thing, yeah. um, which I think is another aspect that makes it unique compared to traditional theater, where you have a set rehearsal schedule, you know when the production dates are going to go up, and you're done with the show after that. This is we always have to come up with new stuff. Like you asked, like how do we keep it fresh? We're rotating games. The cast list changes from show to show. You know, we're trying new, different things all the time. Mm-hmm. Um so it's plus we're having those shows now where we're putting everyone's name in a hat and we're putting all the games in a hat and we're having the audience member choose pull games out of a hat and then pull uh players out of a hat and that's who's going to do that game at that point so we're not it's kept fresh so nobody ever knows nobody ever knows who's going to do which game yeah all right so you brought that so let's get into the structure mm-hmm. um so i want to start with you said before you perform, you rehearse. Yes. Since it's improvisational, <laughs> how, how does that work? <laughs> so, our, so, we wanna, oh, so maybe we, we need to start set, with the definition. We want to make sure that we've at least played, for the, for the basic thing, we want to make sure that we've all at least played a game at least once mm-hmm. before we, so okay. we know the rules. Okay. We're familiar with how it works. Um, it just to, you know, it, it gives an opportunity to, because we do rotate hosting duties. Uh, we have two hosts every night, one for the first act and one for the second act. So it gives them an opportunity to get comfortable with the games and teaching them, right. um, you know, how is this game supposed to run and working through any kinks that might pop up. Mm. But yeah, when it comes to rehearsing, it's the truth, knowing what the games are and if there are any, um, if there are any issues with understanding the rules. Um, so is the, there is a structure yeah, to improv. Yeah, there is. And what is that structure? Because that's everything's based off that, right? There's yeah. a, a give and take, or there's yeah. some kind of a there's a there is a schedule of what games we're going to play. Okay, for the most part, um, or or when we're going to play them. Um, like you know, if this, if the audience is pulling a game out of a hat, then that's you know we'll still have you know from let's say we're doing a seven. 30 show at the hat box and it goes from like what does it go like 7 30 to 9 30 mm-hmm. we'll do like 7 30 to 8 30 we'll have a series of games we might we may have the long form at a at, put the long form in a certain time a certain space before intermission or after intermission or something like that so that's a basic structure like we want to basically know what we're doing uh and then we'll we'll have an intermission then come back and then maybe choose a game to end on yeah, it's, it's kind of like it's an opportunity for everybody to make sure they're familiar with how the games run. And if there are any they're uncomfortable with, gives us an opportunity to practice those. Um, we also talk about um, some theory um, and techniques. Theory? What? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, I guess it requires a definition of a short form improv versus long form. Mm-hmm. So traditionally, like what you see on whose line is it anyway, or when you go to a regular kind of comedic improv night, um, you're seeing mostly short form games. So those are like questions only where you're only allowed to ask questions. And if you give a statement, um, you're out and you go to the end of the line. Um, uh, alphabet, which we might do later, but that's where I, you know, I start a scene and I start with, Letter A, Aaron. It's nice to see you. I'm gonna say, baby, I love seeing you. Like you know, I'll, well, that's a B. So like he'll go C. Yeah, cut it out. You know, we're right. we're in a public setting, like, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So what differentiates those from long form is 
you already have like the gimmick is already kind of laid out for you. Whether it's a guessing game like Party Quirks where everybody gets a, a trait or um, an impression they have to do and the other player has to come in and in the context of a party guess who everybody is or what their quirks are. Um, it's already kind of set up for the audience. Whereas with long form, it's you have to just like you have to make up who you are, uh, what you're doing, where you are, all up on the spot. And you're telling a with story very over constraint. like twenty. Like yeah, you by yourself, or like no, five whole, people doing the same thing. They all so have their own story. story and yeah. we we do it with uh, pretty much whoever is performing. Right. We get to the point where when our troop grew to ten members, the long form was getting a little clunky because. We do what's called the narrative long form, is what we've been doing. So we get a suggestion from the audience, and then everybody off of that suggestion creates a character in the moment. So uh, you just step forward and you're like, hey, I'm so and so, and this is what I'm all about. And, and the next person. You briefly describe, like, you know, what it is you do or whatever it is you want to say about your character, and then. On the fly. And then on the fly, and then step back, and the next person goes in line. So they say top hats from the audience, and everybody has to, who's on stage, yeah, has like, some relationship. The first thing to I would think of is, like, yeah. <laughs> I make top hats for a living. I'm a mad hatter. Right. You know, and then we'll try and then, a basic motivation. And then we, we're always listening to what they're, what they're saying in their characters, so we want to come up with characters that could be, in, like, closely involved. With them in that story. So like, you might be his brother like, in the story. I might be his brother exactly. or the guy who manufactures top hats for him or something like that. You know? Yeah, or the boss or, or something the boss like that or, yeah, or a customer. So you're kind of looking at creating relationships, potentially some conflict and tension. And once everybody's established their character, we break to the sides. And then whoever feels like they have an inspiration steps forward. Somebody else might step forward with them. And then they just create a scene on the spot. Um, so you start your story with those two characters, or where, however. And over the course of fifteen and twenty minutes, and they're just making things up. Making things up on the spot, and then and then everybody else in the troop is like list, paying attention, listening. So then you know we have what we call edits. So if you're someone in the troop that's not on the that's not in the scene, and you feel like the scene has run its course, you can you, you can cross, or you can do other symbols. That allow them to know that the scene is over. Yeah, so and like then, a sweep edit, like when you run across, that means that scene's over. You could say something like, you know, cut to three years earlier when he made his first top hat. Yeah, you can do like flash, you can yell out flashbacks or something, and then they have to act out those flashbacks. Or meanwhile, you know, like, mm -hmm. so this scene is happening. Meanwhile, we go back to these two people, and those two people have to come down and be those characters yeah. again. Um, so, yeah, over the course of 15 to 20 minutes, you're creating a story on the spot with those characters you created off an of audience suggestion. What is the audience hoping for? Are they hoping <laughs> That's for a to see a question. crash? Or are they hoping to see a successful improv? I mean, they, are they I, both? I would I mean, think that they would want to see a well, a story well told from beginning, middle, to end. That's what I would imagine. You're hoping. That That's they, what yeah. I mean. That's what I would want to see if I'm if I'm watching. This I don't know why I would audience, go. You know, I, I mean, I, I have no idea why yeah. I would go. I mean, I'm not sure what. What would draw me? What it is? I would go. I would go. Watching people but, um, under pressure that, is yeah. always fun. And that's what I, yeah, I know. And then, so I'm thinking, do I want to see them flub up? If it's possible, can you flub up an improv? Because it's all well, you know, up. So, it's, but, a, it's a good time. And I think a lot of it is, it's funny because we're always trying our best not to screw up. And that's the key. Always try your best not to screw up. But when you do... It's hilarious, like no, like no other thing, like no other, like a play. If someone screws up in a play, yeah. the audience is like, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it gets well, awkward really fast. It gets awkward. But the audience knows you're making stuff up, so a lot of times when you screw up, the audience loves it. They're just laughing yeah, there, with you. Yeah, there's kind of already some built-in goodwill or audience uh, right. uh, on your side. As long as you well, are... As long as you are trying yeah. not, like your best not to. As yeah. long as you're, you're doing it in good faith, yeah. Yeah. you know, the audience is going to be there with you for the stuff that really works really well and some of the stuff that doesn't work because sometimes games fall flat. Yeah. There's just something, yeah. you know, magic doesn't happen. Um, but if everything else is going well and everybody's good natured about it, um, the evening is successful. Yeah. I think the long forms, when we started actually doing those in front in front of people, because we rehearsed that for even longer yeah. before we were like, we're going to put this in front of an audience, because it really requires a lot of group chemistry. Yeah. Um, Listen, listening is very... Mike Domedy was doing your podcast before, mm -hmm. and he was talking about this too. Listening is very important. Um, not like... Because you could have the best idea in the world, 
And if it's going against what other people are doing, you got to toss it away. Yeah, he mentioned something, and you also did the other time when I was talking to you about, I don't want to put this, um, there's a contract between the, the actors, right? Mm-hmm. Where you won't let, you won't hang your buddy out there to dry. No. They'll give you an idea. Right. You run with it. You don't yeah. go, yeah, no, I'm not. No, doing no. It. Well, yeah. we just had a rehearsal about this, um, was it Monday night? Monday, Monday night. Monday yeah. night. Um, yeah. So one of the things we talked about is denial. Because, like, cause denial meaning. So we, we were specifically talking about long form okay. on Monday because we want to change the format of how we do that. Um, so you have, when the first person steps forward with an idea for a scene, yeah. um, it's called an initiation. Okay. So you're just like, I'm going to say this thing that's going to establish some information. You know, the classic is like, oh, I have this thing for you, or I'm a dentist. You know, you say what you are or what you're about. If I say, hey, nice to meet you. I'm Dentist Bob. And he's like, you're not a dentist. You're a carpenter. That yeah. like, scene falls flat right away. Like, yeah. Some people are good at saving it after that. Like, oh, sorry, I looked like a carpenter. But, like, it, it's you're, – you're – playing against the tide and you're not going with it you know you're not supporting your right. teammate you're not supporting right. your fellow cast right. members Got you. so you want to build off of each other's well right move or word or, or yeah the classic phrase in improv is yes and yes that's you may I have did. heard that yeah. yeah i did um so the idea is that you agree to what something what has already been established or said that's the yes part yes mm-hmm. I agree. and you add more information gotcha and mm-hmm. yeah put something else yeah yeah well, let's talk about audiences for a second. So, so do you, are there some types of audiences which like just love this stuff? Um, well, or we love to perform. It, uh, is it Millie's town or uh, wherever? The, is that a better audience than maybe what's happening? At the, I don't want to denigrate. One, different, I mean, very different audiences. In what way? So, I, Stark Brewing is a bar in pub. So you get food and you get drink. It's a much more relaxed, casual atmosphere. We are literally as close to you um, as as we would be the audience there. There's there's very little to no separation. Between are they the cast. involved? I mean, are, because yeah. I did stand up once, mm-hmm. only once, <laughs> only once. It was down in Boston on Com Ave. Yeah. Nobody was paying attention. It was a bar full of people. There's a margarita blender going in the background. Oof. People are yakking and yakking, and you're sitting there with a three minute spiel we've had, we've had some pretty involved audience members at start so it's not because they're eating and they're even when they're going there. up to order a drink they're yeah. being very respectful throw about something it. out or oh no 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 they'll respect they'll, they'll throw things out like when it's at the proper time when okay. we're asking yeah. them but they're not being disrespectful or rowdy or not paying attention to turn the this. margarita blender on right water. exactly um, i think there was one time there was some people i don't know if they were either co-workers or friends of the people um, working the sh- like the bar, mm. um, they were a little loud at the bar, and somebody, one of our troop members, went up and like, hey, you know, we're we're going on here, and they're like, absolutely sorry, you know, like back off. I mean, there's some casual conversation at tables, yeah. but it's usually about the last thing that was just said that got a good chuckle, right? You know, it's right? It's usually all the about the show. Oh, I liked it. Um, yeah, and then at the hat box, it's you know, the, it's like more of a theater. theater yeah, we're plugging you, theater. Andrew. Yeah. Plugging you, baby. That's right. Um, it's more of a theater kind of experience, so people aren't going to talk or order drinks. or Yeah, and the like lights that. are down. Lights are down. We can do a lot more stuff with the lighting. There's a lot more tech aspects we can utilize. Sound stuff, yeah. At the hat box. Um, I would say they're a little more reticent to give suggestions from the get-go mm-hmm. at the hat box because it's not, that's not a traditional thing when you're in a theater yeah. to have yeah. that interaction. It doesn't have that pub atmosphere. Right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. Um, you know, you're going to see a show, so... I'm going to sit down and see a show. Yeah. Why is an actor talking to me? <laughs> yeah. You know, oh, they want information from me, too. Well, it was so, uncomfortable, too, as an audience member. If you're not used to uh, interacting with people on stage. Right. Yeah. But we never single out any audience members, so this, it takes away some of the discomfort. Yeah. And also, we'll say, you know, that we need a suggestion for a location, and then it might be silent for a bit. But then once one person says a suggestion, then you get all these ideas from yeah, the audience because, yeah. like, you know, it signals the audience, okay, we're just yeah, part of a group. Here. Broken down. And, and there are some sure. games that, like, you need a list of things. Like, World's Worst, you typically need a list of professions. Mm-hmm. So when we do games like that at Hatbox, we look at having whoever's hosting go out before the show. So when everybody's sitting down and, you know, put, taking their coats off, getting their, their waters and their snacks, 
chatting with them and kind of you are you're out there early interacting with them we're we're, we're realizing that's better (laughs) at the hat box yeah because it it loosens them up so that when they do sit down and the show starts, yeah. they're they're a little freer and more comfortable with the cast. Yeah, so they're not expecting a performance as much as right. that now they're yeah they're they involved. Know, yeah, they know that their ideas are maybe evolved, you know, yeah. stuff like that. So, and yeah, it's a very it's a very uh, sort of ca- like sort of casualizing the atmosphere of the theater. Do you have any stories of either a best or a worst night? I mean, did you like have you done a venue and you show up and there's like bikers i mean like, uh <laughs> we, we this is going ran, down we yeah. haven't ran into any audiences that have been like i would say outright hostile and, right yeah no, yeah you know? so far we've been pretty lucky in yeah. that respect um yeah. we did have a show recently um where it was a small audience and there were two audience members who were sitting in the very front who seemed determined to have the worst night possible like they sat down with scowls on their faces and all night, regardless of the content. So they show up at an improv night <laughs> yeah. in, in the front row, yeah. angry to start with. And, and regardless of the venue, we're so close to the audience, it's noticeable. You can't. Yeah. You know, it was a smaller crowd, especially too. So that automatically set kind of a weird juju uh, between the performers and the audience. Mm. You know, it was it was weird. It wasn't an awful show; like it didn't crash and burn, but it had a very Definite lower energy um, yeah. that could be felt through it. Yeah, Mike had said that one of his was they did a, a camp, I think, or something like a camp. Yeah, and none of the kids cared. They they weren't. Yeah, they just weren't into it, and so they hmm. like shut the show down. After I've been really surprised at how into it the audience yeah. has yeah. been for the most part, consistently, consistently. Like especially it's dark. Maybe it's the alcohol or whatever. But like, um, oh. <laughs> but uh, we've had larger audiences and smaller audiences. But the energy feels the same. Yeah. The energy okay, typically feels the same. That's very interesting because that's not always the norm. Right. Larger audience tends to be a little bit quieter because they, they don't, they're don't afraid they're of speaking out. Uh, smaller ones tend to be a little... Yeah, it's totally not like the, like the kind of thing. Like that's true for a lot of theater. That's true for a lot of shows, yeah. you know. But the improv is kind of different. And I think part of it is that they get to participate if they want. And then they're... The en- once you participate in something, your energy level kind of raises, and then that sort of raises the level of the people around you and yeah. kind of spreads. That's and, my theory. And we have, especially at Stark, because um, we've been there longer, uh, we have regulars who come see the show. They're either you know, friends or family of cast members. Really? Um, yeah, who come. There's some who have come almost every month, which we yeah. weren't expecting. You know, yeah. like that would be a regular thing. Because that's one of the questions about the viability of an improv troupe. You know, if we're doing a monthly show and you've seen it once, what's kind of the incentive to go it's again? Like a magician, right? I mean, yeah, right. exactly. So I think part of how we've answered that is by keeping things continually new and different for the sets. Mm. Um, but yeah, they are regulars and they come and they know what to expect, so they're ready to throw out things. Um, yeah. There's a group, uh, friends of our fr- uh, member Melanie. Uh, who come very consistently, um, they have a favorite game. Um, two-headed interview. Yeah. Um, and Melanie's, you know Melanie, she's yeah. in our show, and she's really good at two interviews. Yeah, so there's there's two different ways of doing it, but every time we announce we're doing either version of it, they're like, oh yeah, woo! Yeah. You know, they're so ready for it. Yeah. And that just automatically makes you like, I want to do this well for them. Yeah. You know, I, I, that's what I like about a good audience, a good energetic audience. Mm. It makes you want to step up and do better for them. Yeah. Let's circle back to structure for a second, mm-hmm. and then we can segue into samples. Mm-hmm. So the structure is there, there's two basic short and a long. Is that, mm-hmm. is that yeah. correct? Yeah. Um, and then there's things off of those? Yes. So there's different types of short and different types of long? Yeah. So if you've looked at um, Whose Line Is It Anyway, if anyone's ever seen that, mm-hmm. all the games they play are what are all considered short form improv. Because again, the gimmick of the, the piece is already there for you. You know, you don't have to work to figure out what the unusual thing about that scene is. Mm-hmm. Right. The audience already knows. Long form, there's a lot of different structures. Um, there's something called the Armando where uh, you get an audience suggestion, somebody gives a monologue based off of that suggestion, a true monologue. monologue. Yeah. On the spot. On the spot. Yep. <laughs> it, can be, it can be anything, really. I'm sweating now. <laughs> yeah, it, it can be anything. And uh, 
then you just do... It can be any, a monologue. You're talking... There's people who can't memorize a monologue. <laughs> yeah, never yeah. Mind, just, you don't have to memorize like, anything. You, you just want, talk. The, oh, my God. The one right, thing right. about the, that, though, is the monologue has to be true. It can't be a made-up story about that topic. So that kind of makes it easier for the 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 monologist. I think. Yeah, I, I think that's what monologist. I call it. That is monologist. That, I did yeah. hear that word in professional settings. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you know, it's kind of telling an anecdote, which makes it easier. But people who are the other performers who are listening end up pulling pieces of that monologue out to create scenes for like twenty minutes. So if I was doing a monologue about me putting my cat in the dryer, mm -hmm. right. you, then you would start. We could you, do things about that, or like you know, someone's wife cat. coming is like, "What happened to the cat?" And that whole scene about you know trying to skirt around the issue, blah blah blah, because maybe the cat didn't do so well in the dryer. <laughs> he didn't. Story, <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't. Um, but yeah, you just <laughs> you do twenty minutes worth of scenes based off of information pulled from the monologue. Right. Um, the long form we're working on is called the Herald. So again, you get a suggestion. There's a couple different ways to do an opening to generate ideas. Mm -hmm. You could do a monologue. Uh, we have a couple talented singers, uh, improv singers, so they can maybe make a song up on the spot. Um, that, that impresses me. That <laughs> impresses. Uh, word association, like you, you just throw ideas out there. Um, it's a little more structured where you do uh, sets of three scenes. So you have scene A, scene B, scene C. Then you have a little break in between and you play a game or something like that. Then you have scene 2A, 2B, 2C. So it's a continuation of the previous one. And then you do another game and then you wrap them up in a third. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a completely organic long form, which is you just go out in front of an audience, get a suggestion, and make everything up on the spot. Which That's what I picture improv being. Yeah, right. and it's really something that I would love to try. Um but it's asking a lot both of audience and of performers. And I think we have to get to a certain point where we are really solid on all the fundamentals of improv theory. Um, well, how long does that take? That's a good question. It depends it, on it the just, group. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that we do well as a troop because we have great chemistry together. I, I think what's really nice is not only do we perform improv together, but we also spend time outside of Queen City Improv Together, hanging and social out. events, hanging out, yeah. doing shows together, playing video Do games, up on street corners. <laughs> hey, yeah. Yeah. I kind of like that idea too. I, I one of my favorite stories, not uh, not stories. Uh, one of the people I like to bring up whenever I talk in uh, as Jonathan Winters, mm -hmm. yeah, because he was he did both stand up and improv at the same time on live TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, on live TV. That's like the pinnacle, right? I mean, it's like how higher can you go? In his show, I don't know if you ever saw it, but at the end of his show, he never knew they would there was a treasure chest, just a big old honking chest, and he never knew what was in it. Never. And he would open the thing up and then just go do improv of things just pulling stuff yep. out of it. Live TV. Like, you know, there's no editing involved. Nothing. It's just yeah. No That's pressure. to me. That would be like stand up would be my next thing because I've never done stand up before, and I'm still trying to get the margarita blender going. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go to well, I'm gonna go to Boston and find some place where I don't know anybody. And so we're trying to figure out where he's going to do this because he doesn't right. want us to be there. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. nobody. Well, I, if someone I know does go, they have to do a set too. Yeah, that's oh, my oh, only rule. Oh, oh, oh. That's my only rule. Night. I'm terrified of stand up. Yeah. It's probably the, the one type of performance I've never done yeah. because I feel like. With, it's fascinating. I know it's it's a weird thing. <laughs> they're like brothers, they're like twin brothers. You know, you know, but I, I look at stand up. You're going and you're going in with material you prepared. Yeah, jokes you've written, things you thought about, stories you have to tell. And if an audience doesn't like it, that just seems like it would be so. It's painful. just you there. I'd it's have, just you to like bear that pain. But I know? have that problem with improv because even though you bring up whose line is it. There's times when it just pains me to watch it because I see that there's a difference in quality. Some of the people are very good, very smart, very sharp. The others are, are just, they're off by mm -hmm. a bit and they're kind of riding the coattail. And I can tell that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not funny. No. They, they, they repeat what's already been said as though yes, you, they, they kind of make it up. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's painful to me. I agree. Sure. Which is the same thing as bad stand up. But. But if you're if you're on stage all by yourself and something I don't know something happens, you got no one to pick up the slack yeah. but yourself. 
Whereas, you know, as that. you don't intend anything to happen, but sometimes things, you know, might happen and someone else could save it. Yeah. You can't, that's, there's no one else there. Do you guys yeah. have a, a preferred, as a group, do you, do you find that um, there's a certain, you migrate naturally towards a certain game or a certain uh, type of... Everyone has particular strengths, yeah. but... Um, uh, so it's very eclectic then what you're going to do. I mean, you can... You don't have to rely on short form or long form. You, you're well, comfortable. Well, I think short form is the the most frequent kind of game we play because that's the game I think that is most that people most identify as an audience mm. that they want to see. Yeah, because in this area, there's not um, like an established group like Second City. It's not an improv town or an improv area where that's very much part of the culture. Mm-hmm. Um, in the state, you're saying that? Or yeah. In this area. In this state, this stuff in New England in general. Portsmouth, they got there? I mean, well, they, they have a group that's been around for a while, but um, you look at um, something like Second City or um, uh, Upright Citizens Brigade, where you have people who have made it famous. Um, uh, Amy Poehler uh, from Parks and Rec. She started off at uh, Upright Citizens Brigade, and they've established their identity and their uh, as a training academy and also producing really funny people. Um, you don't have that same culture in this area because it's, it's not New York. It's not Boston. It's not Chicago. It's not LA. Um, Would it help if you had your own house? Does that help at all? I mean, if you have your own, Oh, like what, like theater that, would, that you know it, it's dedicated towards the, I, I would say absolutely. Like a comedy club sure. or something. You know? So, the short form stuff, a lot of people are very familiar with because of whose line is it anyway. They kind of have an idea of like, these are gimmicks or games mm-hmm. and we're going to play it. That's why we've been introducing slowly the long form and changing it and evolving it um, as audiences get more comfortable with it because they're just not familiar with right. it as an entertainment. Um, I but think the, the reactions have been very... We have been having some positive reactions yeah. for a lot, for, a, for the one long form that we get been weird. doing. They get weird. Yeah. What does that mean, the one long form? That well, we, we have a particular, right now, the troop is, uh, for the last, I don't know, however many, uh, we've been doing a particular type of long form, a uh, particular That's game. That's the narrative long form. The narrative long form, yeah. yeah. Uh, which is, uh, you know, while we're developing other long forms, we've been doing that one for audiences. And it's been it's been getting on really well with audiences. There's been some shows where that was like the highlight of the show. Oh. Um, so. Yeah, and, and I, I think as an audience member, they start off looking at like, what am I watching here? But if the story and the characters are compelling enough, they get involved in it. I, we've had some that have been downright hilarious. Yeah. We've had some that have been compelling, but not necessarily laugh a minute things. We've had some that have just been weird because that's the nature of doing it on the spot. You never know what the, um, kind of what the tone is going to be until it happens. But it's all been, I think, very engaging for the audience to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, so being able to expand that and expand that to a, a wider audience. Um, via Stark Brewing and via the Hat Box, it, it, it's awesome that we get an opportunity to do that. Yeah. So we're, in a minute, we'll get into actually doing some. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so uh, I want to make sure that you get out your information about where you're housed, where you're from, the sure. basics. So why don't you give me an overview of where is QCI? You have a headquarters. You have a you have a website. Do you have a Facebook page? Do you yeah. have anything? We do have a website, QueenCityImprov.com. dot com. Yep. Um, we do have a Facebook page, mm-hmm. um, Queen City Improv. Um, uh, we have Snapchat and Instagram and Instagram Twitter. All, like, uh, I think it's Queen City underscore NH. Um, but if you go to the website or Facebook, it has yeah, it really it has all that information. Right, yeah. um, Stark Brewery. Stark yep. Brewery. So Stark typically Brewery. with Stark Brewing, we're the first Monday of every month. Um, except if a holiday falls on that, we will do the following Monday. Um, Hatbox Theater has been typically the third Thursday of every month, but there are some changes in that. Um, their new season starts in September, and we have a lot more Friday night shows, for, which I think will be better for Concord. Yeah, I think Con- been- Concord is a weird kind of city for, I think, theater of any kind uh, in terms of getting audiences out because um, the city is kind of so... Diffuse, it's so spread out. Yeah. Um, so on a Thursday night, getting people to go see a comedy thing that, you know, yeah. goes a little late on a Thursday night. But on a Friday night, I think that's something much more. Yeah, I wonder if the, that new Bank of New Hampshire stage would work for you guys. Are you familiar with that? I, I yeah, I just saw they took down the rest of the construction yeah, yeah, they're uh, signage and stuff like that. So. Mm. Um, it seems like it would kind of be geared towards... Because it's not a theater theater. It. 
Right. I haven't been into it. We definitely like small space. Small spaces work well. With, mm-hmm. um, but I haven't yeah, been we're like rats. We, yeah. we like really small spaces. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, it's, I, I mean, it's one of those things. If we find a new venue, uh, it's something that has to work with our schedules. Yeah, um, yeah. And hopefully has an audience uh, kind of built into it. Uh, we would like to stay Manchester-centric with occasional forays into other areas. Um, do you ever do events? Do you, do you get people saying, hey, it's a Christmas party and we get... We, well, we need it's to- actually funny you brought that up. Um, so Nashua Theatre Guild, uh, this past New Year's, yeah. did a whole New Year's Eve gala ball drop event where they had a drag show, they had stand-up comedy, and they had us. Um, so that was like a special event outside of our normal thing. Um, like I said, we've done some charity fundraisers and stuff like that. Um, we're looking at doing uh, workshops. Uh, we've had a couple groups approach oh, us. I meant to ask you about that, too. So you yeah. do classes as well, right? So we don't do official classes yet. Okay. Uh, we have just finalized some things that will allow us to do that because, like, insurance oh. is important. Yeah. Um, so we now have insurance so we can go into other buildings and spaces and kind of do things on our own. Uh, and we just finalized the structure of how we want to run our classes. Um, so myself and Katie Hickman, who's another one of our founding members, will be starting classes um, hopefully sometime in August or September. What do you, what, what kind of people you're hoping come out? People that you can maybe add into the group or just you just want people to come out and learn about improv? What's uh, Both. So we run auditions twice a year for the troupe. You do? Yes. Yep. Uh, so we do a spring set of auditions and we do a fall set of auditions. Um, but how often does the troupe change? Or do you have multiple troops? Do you have... No, no it's, no, it's, it's the 10 right now. Okay. We would like a complement of 12 because that makes... In some ways, it makes scheduling easier. It makes it a little more complex just with the moving pieces, yep. the number of people. But having a consistent number of performers at a show is necessary. Um, 10 is doable. Uh, 12 would make it a lot easier. 12 at a show? No, 12 no, 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 no. in the oh. troop. 12 okay. in the troop. Okay. So we, have, we are always having at least six people in the show. Got you. Yeah. Exactly like the- yeah, that's our minimum to do a show. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I lost the thread of the question. Uh, I was just curious about uh, are people coming in and out? Do you oh, have your yeah. class? Oh, for the so yeah, we've had some changeover. Yeah. Um, we had some members um, who originally founded for um, health and personal reasons had to leave. Um, family, you know, things stuff that pops up. You know, it is a commitment, so that can be difficult if you have other things right. in your life going on. Um, right. You, you know. have a uh, like, and I know you're young as a group, but do you, do you have like a? a a goal where you're like, man, we would it would be great if we had like four groups, and you know they're shooting off into, especially in maybe the holiday season. Mm-hmm. We're doing conventions. We're doing. Have you gotten to that point yet, or are you still like, we, we the Stark Brewery's taken all of our energy out of us, and that's all we can it's, handle. It's one of the things that we've talked about, but we haven't made any firm decisions because we're now looking at. Long term, what do we want this to be? You know, yeah. uh, uh, do we want to go nonprofit or for profit? Yeah. You know, what, what are our, our goals? Um, we love just spreading the idea of improv and giving people an opportunity. I mean, our, our motto is improv for the people. Yeah. So that's why we do the free monthly open sessions. Which you should come, I think. Well, yeah. <laughs> I think you should. Yes. Have yeah. been. Um, because you have people who have done theater and are looking to, like, oh, yeah. Like Aaron, I did improv in college. I would love to give it a try and see what it's like. Or they want to use it to strengthen skills. You have people off the street who, like, I just saw this advertised on Facebook. I want to see what it's all about and give it a try. Like, Yeah, we've had a couple of people just walk in on the open session. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. People who have never done any performing whatsoever, just average citizen coming. You never know what, You never know if it's going to open up something. Until what do you have to end? be smoking to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's nobody they know, uh, uh, I guess. Uh, presumably. We, we had one regular uh, at Open Sessions for a long time who, uh, I think she was a therapist or a psychologist um, in her day-to-day life. And she said, like, it gets heavy and it gets her down. Mm. So she was looking for a release, you know, a stress release. A yeah. stress release. There, I Improv. Know, there is something therapeutic about it if you look at the game side of it, the way it's the fun side of it. Yeah. If you're just having fun and letting loose and maybe all the things that you kind of imagine if you're like someone who's always imagined these situation and characters, maybe that's a way to get them out of your head maybe. or something. You know? Maybe. <laughs> 
You know, it's yeah. different. There's a lot up there, you know. Is there anything we're about to segue into actually demonstrating some of the forms? Mm -hmm. and so, but it, before we do that, now, so this is going to go out to I don't know, fifteen, sixteen thousand households in Concord. Yep, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So I think it's that many. So I thought I was just staying in this room, but yeah, <laughs> no, no, yeah, just no. About, yeah. Um, so, is there anything about QCI that you want this Concord audience to know, or, or wherever they're going to talk to after this about QCI? Yeah, we have a show coming up at the Hat Box uh, next Thursday, which is the twenty seventh. Yep. Yeah. Twenty seventh. Seven thirty. Yep. Um, I, I would honestly suggest if you've ever you Steeple Gate Mall for anybody who doesn't know. Yeah. Hat Box. Oh yeah. Um, Gate Mall. I have a brother who lives in Maine who's got lost three times trying to yeah. get to the theater. Kind of a big place. Um, I. It, if you ever had, can he get to the mall? Had, I mean, he, he did eventually. <laughs> it's really but if you tough ever had people who I mean, haven't been able to go to shows because they couldn't find their way around that mall. So, but if you ever had a question about like what does an improv show look like, uh, or if you're just looking for a fun evening, come see. Yeah. It, it really, um, it's it's new, it's unique. Every time we do it, yeah, uh, it, it, we're still interested in it's, doing it, 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 which I think two, saying that two years down the road, yeah, yeah. Um, I agree with and like the, the the audiences have consistently had fun, yeah. in our show, like consistently. Are you working on any other new venues to, to try to spread out? I mean, are you just uh, really the the with? workshops and classes will be okay. kind of the next step, yeah. and then um, you know, depending on how the troop growth goes, we might look at doing other venues. Um, mm -hmm. But it's basically more like we have our our two monthly shows. Our open session, and then with classes and workshops, maybe doing some other smaller events here or there. But that would be kind of a, a per event basis. Okay. Um, I'm looking at, um, and you never charge over twenty grand per show, right? So, oh god, no. So you're not easy a, in that. Yeah, slot. not over. No, not. We're actually over very grand. affordable. Yeah, I bet you. Yeah. Are. It's like call 90, for our pricing. Nineteen point five, yeah. something. Like that. Coffee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do some stuff. All right, All right. we're gonna start. Showing some examples of different kinds of improv. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're going to start short form first. Is yeah. that what we're? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. So uh, this first game is called Two Headed Interview. Okay. Um, and I'll explain the rules and then uh, we'll start because the format is going to require me to not talk as much as like, right. I am right now. Um, so basically, you're going to be interviewing us. Okay. We are an expert on. Uh, we just got suggestion from uh, our, our audience member. Right? Yeah, our, our audience, audience member, member for, um, uh, who gets to hide in the booth now. <laughs> um, so we are going to be an expert on smelly aardvarks. Smelly aardvarks. And you are going to interview us, and uh, we'll respond um, in a particular in a very fashion. Particular way. Okay. Whenever you're ready, yep. professor. <laughs> All right. Gentlemen, I understand that you're experts on uh, aardvarks. We are very good at talking about smelly aardvarks. Smelly in particular? Y yes. But once in a while, we like to talk about dangerous and frightening aardvarks. Huh. So dangerous, smelly types of aardvarks. Okay. Where would I find uh, most of those aardvarks? Well, you should really go to the woods and look up the ferns and die smelly. Look up the ferns? Is that did you say that? Correct. Did I get that correctly? You did. Yes. Okay. So, how long have you been studying these? Smelly aardvarks. We've been studying smelly aardvarks for about 12 years. Give or take a decade. Okay, that would put you at like two years. Or 12. Or no, 22. <laughs> So are, are you both equal? Um, do you specialize? Do you have specialties for, do you like do albino aardvox and you do, you know, only ones in heat? What, what happens there? Toby really loves albino aardvox because Aaron loves chewy aardvox. Interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. Chewy. Chewy. Huh. So, um... Do these animals, they congregate somewhere? Where would you find, like, a family of them? Usually, 
in McDonald's. <laughs> okay, McDonald's. All right. Do I keep going? It's if up to you. It is. Or do or I run across the stage we and, and could and that's the stop. Game two. You want to go? Sure, ahead? sure. Okay. All right. Right. Cool. Okay. So yeah, um, there there is a variation of that uh, where we would speak simultaneously. So um, we would all at the same time. It's still so, two headed, but yes. yeah. How does that work? Well, okay. So it, it, ask ask a question. Just a sure. Moment. Sure. Um, gentlemen, what school did you go to? We, we went, went to. to very good school called Jesus. <laughs> Something painful about that. <laughs> that's just an example. Yeah, that's just an example. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I bet that's a hot one when everyone's... Stop, stop. The thing is, uh, people just, die, just they love it. Oh, that is, um, know, yeah. And that's one of the ones, like, we talk about chemistry. Um, I don't know that you and I have ever done the simultaneous one. We haven't. Really, because you couldn't tell. We haven't. You couldn't yeah. tell. Um, I could tell. <laughs> some of, like, we have found pairings like Mel and I, um, Melanie yeah. and I, work so well together when it comes to do the simultaneous one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we found a pairing via the random polls uh, the other night that uh, Katie and Ryan in our troop have a very particular energy and rhythm uh, that is pretty fantastic, mm. you know. So that's one of those things like, oh, you know, we've done a theme show where we're looking at um, kind of best of um, Queen City improv. So that would be like games that we really enjoy playing or loves to see um, or even pairings of people for particular games. Mm. So, at, you know, sometimes we throw those in like, oh, it's, you know, this, sh- this set list, we know what games we're playing, we know who's playing it because we do – we do sometimes do a regular set list where we know what games we're playing. Okay. Um, yeah. In that case, I'll throw in occasionally, all right, this pairing works really well. We're going to do that. Or it'll be, I'm going to try this pairing. Um, so for this next game. Uh, this is a good game. You don't have to be as involved in this. Yeah. Game. So <laughs> I need you to pick one of these scripts. It's just like magic. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Scenes for kids. Scenes for kids. So this is called Actor's Nightmare. Yeah. It's based off of the play by Christopher Durant. Ever okay. seen it? No. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, so the whole idea of that play is uh, there's an actor who um, doesn't know the lines to the play. I mean, it's, and like, it's something like Hamlet or something, right? It's like very, yeah, very something, cool. something Shakespearean, some Shakespearean uh, yeah. and no one else has showed up and has to perform the show. Um, so I think it's tech people are on script, and she's all on her own. Um, so for this, for the whole play. For the yeah. whole play. Uh, so I'm going to be reading my lines from the script. I know what I'm going to say. Okay. Mm-hmm. Aaron does not. Okay. Um, so between uh, pages 6 and 60. Can you give me a page number? 32. 32. Okay, Aaron, uh, whenever right. you're ready. Well, uh, do we get, want a suggestion like oh. a location or something? Oh, or, or a relationship. A relationship. A, re- um, a relationship. Um, boss and worker. Okay. They were not. Look, I promise you, they were. They were trying to break into the computer, and I'm trying to figure out, before I can log on, how I can get through it. Marcy Goldberg's a big, fat jerk. Yeah, it was probably her. But I can't get through her, through to her number. Cheater. Yeah, I know. Oh, tell me about it. Oh, did I? Did you even know what she did last week? Cheaters never win. Exactly. Cheaters never exactly win. Exactly. And now she's cheating. She's been yelling that to us, and now she's cheating. She has the gall. Um, <sighs> you were. I was. Yeah, I was. I, I mean, that's a different website for when I'm when I bought <laughs> out. I, I, I was only kidding. I mean, I mean, give me a break. Okay. Thank you. Just don't tell. The higher, higher. Okay, ups, okay. okay. Please, Lighten like, up. I was right. only kidding. I, I take Thank it back. You. Okay. I, I mean, no, I'm not supposed to have that. On you my didn't cheat. No, I, I, I didn't cheat. Um, I was trying. I was googling something else, and that website came up. So I wasn't. It wasn't. How come? Well, because a lot of the terminology at this job, I still don't know. So I had to Google it, and I ended up googling a word that maybe you know would bring up that website. So sorry. <laughs> I'm glad our mom doesn't have to work. Yeah, me too, man. She would kill me if she saw this. 
How come his dad isn't there? Do we have to bring that up again? Just like Eric Mills. His dad lives someplace else, too, and he only gets to see him once in a yeah. while instead of every day like we do yeah. our dad. Yeah, I know, but, you know, we we just we don't talk to him anymore for specific reasons. He would come into this computer every day and just mess everything up. So we're not going to talk to him anymore. Wow. Okay, and there. That so that's the actor's nightmare. So you, what you said was nowhere near what was in that book, I guess. Oh, God, no. Oh, no, no. If you no. want to look, you said page 32. So I read Michael's lines, uh, and then I went into... Um, uh, Crazy. No, uh, I don't know the show. Billy's so. lines. Right. So it's all so you, vastly different. And you, you bring these total different set every time? Nobody's ever seen any of these. So uh, either between myself or Melanie or anyone else who has scripts, like we kind of, Melanie has a bag of stuff that we bring to every show and there's a bunch of scripts. Some she's been in, some she's read. Some of us know the play, like either by reputation. Mm. Um, but yeah, typically who was ever doing it doesn't know, doesn't know the script at yeah, all whatsoever. So you're just making everything up. Crazy. Yeah. So going into the next one. Um, Oh, let's do alphabet. So let's oh, yeah, explain what's good. going on here. We yep. have cards. <laughs> yeah, cards. so as I mentioned in the interview, um, a part, if you've already seen that, um, so these are the cards we use for audience members. We kind of like, hey, pick a card, any card, sort of thing. So he pulled Actor's Nightmare, which is actually what we just well, did. we already did, yeah. Um, so this tells the host what game we're playing, how many players, and an idea, uh, suggestion for an audience, uh, from the, to get from the audience. Um, so not only is it a way to randomly pull games, but it also gives the host the information they need to kind of remind them of the rules and, and what's necessary. Um, and we also have uh, in here cast member names. They're usually separated, but I yep. got kind of in one pile right now. Yep. Um, so this is what we've been utilizing for our completely ran random blind sets, as we call them. Do, um, do you have, do, I don't mean to interrupt, but no, do, go for it. do you have an order that you can go through? Like, you know that you want to peak on a certain skit or I mean you want to warm people up with one and you work into it and then you know that this is going to really bring the house down before intermission there are, right? there are certain games that we've have found that uh, more audience pleasing like like to just get something started or yeah, to like finish on you know <laughs> sure yeah. yeah well that's always audience always. pleasing well um, oh well I mean, sorry, about, sorry about yeah. that <laughs> yeah um, when it comes to the actual structured set lists when I sit down as artistic director and make a set list um, whether it's based off a theme or like trying to figure out how many people we have. Um, I look at a game like questions only um, is a very simple line game that involves everybody in the, in the mm -hmm. show. Um, it's very simple. It's a very good icebreaker. It gets some chuckles, sometimes a big laugh, but it's a good, like ease the audience into yeah. the show kind of thing. Um, we typically always end our act one with our long form because it's a story that has an arc, a beginning, middle and end. So it's a good way to end the first act to go into intermission. Yeah. Um, we have about four games that we kind of rotate through for the end of a show. So regardless if we're doing a structured set list or um, a random one, that last game is typically always the same. Um, it's always nailed in stone what it is. We know what it's going to be. Uh, so there's, the format. there's like, yeah. So it's like Irish drinking song is a very, you know, yeah. you know, it's, it's got a rhythm. Everybody's yeah. cheering in as I did, I did, I did, I did, I did, I did. I did, I did. And, and sort of it, it, you don't have to sing really well to do it, so that's why. I yeah, it just, well, yeah, um, <laughs> Irish shanty, shanty, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. There's one called Sixty Second Story, where you take a famous fairy tale or movie, you do it in sixty seconds, and then you do it in thirty, then seconds, you do it in thirty, and then fifteen, and then like seven, seven, less, seven which, and a half seconds. Yeah. So as it goes on, it it gets more and more frantic and energetic, and it's a really good like way to end a show because it's like, ah, in seven seconds, ah, we're done. We're done, and everybody's exhausted by the end of it. If there's kind of like a stunt show like element to this that's kind of fun to watch. Did you, you know, say the, stunt show? Yeah, like a yeah. stunt show because it's kind of like a, yeah. a stunt in yeah. a way. Sure. You know, sure. it's like taking the same thing to like 15 seconds and like seven seconds. Very and... dangerous, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. You stunt doubles. For... Yeah. Well, there's actually a game called Stunt Double. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if uh, Aaron and I were doing a scene, uh, we would have two other members – and usually you want to, like, what's a dangerous profession? What's a dangerous activity? So during, during the scene, oh, you know, we're, we're mountain climbing. Oh, yep. 
you know, oh no, I'm about to fall. Stunt double. And then so you go off. They have to come on and then be the then ones who fall or do whatever. Um, if that's been a crowd pleaser. We've only done it a couple times. Yep. Uh, I think two different shows and um, it's got a really interesting energy. <laughs> and if you're one of the regular performers, you just kind of sit back and be like, all right. <laughs> all right. So what are we doing next? Uh, alphabet. Yes. So this will, you don't even, well, this has a, its own stop. So what the game is, is uh, we're going to do a scene, um, and with each word that we say, or each uh, time a person speaks, they're going to start with the next letter of the alphabet. So we're going to ask you uh, for a letter of the alphabet. Or an audience member. <laughs> or one of you for an, a letter of the alphabet. Yeah. Uh, so just choose a letter of the alphabet, whatever it is. There are 26, so... There are. I went to public school, so I didn't know that. Z. Z. Okay, so we're going to start with Z. All right. And, uh, what, I don't, what does that say? P. 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 So we'll start with P. We'll start with P. Okay, we'll start with P. Um, and you don't need me out here for this. No, right? we don't, but you we know. do need one last suggestion. Yeah, um, we do. So yeah. uh, what's a, like a bad vacation destination? Or like what's a bad kind of trip? Lowell. <laughs> All right. A little bad. Hmm. Ooh, planning this trip has been a bit of a tough uh, task, but I think I have the perfect solution. It's quite the ordeal. <laughs> it's quite the ordeal this has been. Lowell, Massachusetts. Right. So what's our first stop on our trip? Uh, taking a ride down to Nashua first. Unusual. To go north before you go south to the city. Uh, very unusual. However, uh, I figure if we want to take the, the scenic route before we get there, it'd make it a little bit more interesting. Well, you plan this trip, so I'm, I'm on board with whatever you got planned. Just exactly. You know, where are we going to go? Get, exactly. And I just have to, you know, be more confident in myself. So thank you. You don't need to be any more confident than you already are. You're a very confident person. How we? No one's ever said that to me before. Ah, oh, shucks. I, I couldn't have been the first person that said that. Buddy, I'm telling you, no one has ever had that much confidence in me. Come before. on, you're pulling my leg. Dude, we got to go now. <laughs> oh, enough chit chat. We got to get going. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Frankly, you're the, you're the only person I want to take this trip with. Gosh, that, that really hits home. I, I feel the same same way. Home. Huh. I miss home. Ithaca's so far away, but we decided we're going to take this trip. <sighs> Just stick with me, and we'll get to both places. Karen, I'm so glad you're in my life. I, I really don't know if I've expressed that enough, but I'm so glad you're in my life. Leo... We're about to crash. You might want to stick back back to the wheel. My go, oh, my God! It's my my responsibility. <laughs> I completely forgot. I'm getting so wrapped up. <laughs> Neighbors are looking. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Hi. <laughs> <sighs> Perfect. Dude, and that is alphabet. Mm. That's fast thinking. That's fast thinking. I couldn't even remember that. I'm like, wait, what letter are they on? What, what? Oh, we are what? Fully successful 80% of the time? Yeah, I would say uh, it, you know, it's yeah. higher than 50, I think. You know? yeah, it's higher than 50, <laughs> but not by much. <laughs> but Because we, we typically do it with three people, which right. adds some dimension, especially when you're moving around. Uh, you know, everybody's moving on stage for whatever reason. So the order you start with should stay the same. But, like, if somebody goes across the stage and they're on that side, they... They get confused and they start losing letters. It's, but that's one of the games where the audience is on board with it, right? Because they're like, "Oh, they missed one." If someone missed one, usually, typically, the audience just cracks up or yeah. like doesn't even notice one or the other. You know, X's and Z's usually get a good laugh. Yeah, people trying to. Yeah, I was watching for it. Yeah, yeah. we we fudge it a little because we shouldn't technically be using a word like exactly. Um, oh, yeah. Because it has the X sound, but it doesn't start with the letter X, right. so it's a little cheating. But there's so many, other than Xerox and Xavier, there's really uh, yeah. quite a few words. Xanadu, Xylophone. Xanadu, Xylophone, yeah. You're going to have to like just have a mental list. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's a tough one sometimes, right. depending on the letter. All right, yeah. that's good. How are we doing for time? A little All bit right. of time? 
Uh, you want to wrap it up? We'll or? get ready to wrap it up. You have one more you want to show? So do we just want to give a quick example of how we start the long form with the narrative? Just sure. Uh, we'll get a suggestion. Sure. We'll do some quick word association, and then we'll create our characters. You okay and with then that, Matt? You okay with should that? should take like three okay. minutes. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to do some long form, or are they going to do an example of a long form, work into it? So not, not a full one, just kind yeah. of the intro yeah. of how, yeah. how we would yeah. start yeah. the base. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because um, no, typically no, the long form no, goes yeah. 15 to 20 minutes. Right. Um, but yeah, so... Um, what is what's something you would find in a junk drawer? A ring. A ring. Ring. Okay. Uh, ring. Wedding. Bride. Groom. Sad. Angry. Father. Darth Vader. Breathing. Insomnia. Uh, awake. Frantic. Uh, g- g- jittery. Nervous. Crazy. Eggs. Benedict. Arnold. Palmer. Kath. O'Hara? Catherine. O'Hara. Peter. Gabriel. Jones. E. Male. Female. Closet. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so these are just, that's just word association. Just yeah. to generate some ideas. Some ideas, yeah. So well, you're not in the game yet. This not is, the game no, yet. this is it's just, just how and we then so it. we would create characters. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Yep. Hi, I'm Catherine O'Hara, and I have a problem. I've lost my wedding ring. Where did it go? I don't know. It was so meaningful the day Dale proposed to me. He didn't get down on one knee. He got down on both knees and proposed. It was the most beautiful thing. The starlight was out, and he couldn't have looked more handsome. We just had a nice dinner. It wasn't a special occasion. It was just a good dinner. And my ring, I don't know where it went. I don't want to tell him, but I don't know. Honesty has always been a part of our relationship, a founding integral part, so I I guess I will be honest with him. Hi, my name is Dale. Uh, I have kind of an embarrassing confession to make. So... Uh, I met this chick called Catherine O'Hara, and I thought she was the famous actress, but she wasn't. She was just some other chick with the same name. So I proposed to her, figured I'd be getting rich. Then I found out she wasn't rich, so I took the ring and made her think, made her think she lost it somewhere. So um, I'm kind of in a situation because she don't. She still believes that she lost the ring, and she keeps calling me every day. And then we would break apart and, break and start and do scenes. The scenes. It would be interesting to do that with just two people. Yeah. 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 Where well, you don't normally do it with just two people? No, no we, do it with we, the have, like, we have like, everyone will step, all everyone the performers step forward that are there. and introduce their characters. Yep. Yeah, we typically do six main performers, and then we have two utility players. So if you're in a crowd scene, the utility players can come in and take on the role of extras, not any, not any named characters. All right. Damn. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Matt, we thank you. Yes, thank you, Matt. Transcripted QCI out of Manchester. Aaron, Toby. It's been a pleasure. Thank you you very much. Great show. (laughs) And there you go. Another great one in the tank. That one's going off to the memorial. Have a great day.